What is going on guys? My name is Irvin and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about probably the most important part of any car build and that is wheel fitment. Now if you're anything like me, you want your car looking good when you're sitting in the Popeyes drive through line waiting for that spicy chicken sandwich. But you're not going to achieve that with garbage fitment. Look at that. That is horrible. There's so much fender to wheel clearance. It's ridiculous. So today I'm gonna to guide you guys through pretty much all of the steps to measuring out your car, to buy new wheels for it, and kind of show you guys around what all the specs mean on wheels, like the diameter, the offset, and the width, and all that kind of stuff. So this video should have you guys being able to measure all this out by yourselves in no time and getting some wheels that fit nice and tasty on your car. So first things first, you kind of got to decide on what kind of fitment you want. As you guys have just seen, this is my 2003 IS300, and this is stock fitment on a lowered car. It is absolutely atrocious. So you can see that it's sucked in quite a bit. On the other side, it isn't nearly as bad. That is a little closer to flush right there just barely poking out a little bit but the reason that is is because I'm usually running spacers so I've been running about a 25 millimeter spacer all around just to account for my front brakes because my front brakes are a little too beefy and don't really fit under stock wheels so I had to run a 25 millimeter spacer on them you can see those guys right there so I put spacers in the rear too but I took one of them out just so I could show you what whack fitment looks like for me i really like the flush to the fender look maybe poking out of the fender a little baby bit but i don't want too much stretch and i kind of want to run a pretty good sized tire on it my front fitment is pretty much where i want it i don't want it sticking out too much i don't want much camber i just want it even with the fender and still having a beefy tire on it so that's what we're going to be going for in the front same in the rear pretty much so let's see what we have to do to do that. Since our front fitment is already dialed, I'll show you guys the rear. Honestly, it kind of tucks in a little bit at the top, a little bit more than I would like. So I think I'm gonna be getting wheels that are a little bit wider than that, so they stick out a little bit more. At this point, about two centimeters wider is pretty much as far as I would be willing to go in the rear. So that's the measurement we're gonna be going for. So now that we've figured out where we want our outer lips to be, we gotta figure out where we want our inner lips to be. So this is all gonna be dictated by where your suspension components are that are gonna be the closest to hitting the wheel. On the IS300 in the front, you've got the front spindle. That's gonna be pretty much the limiting factor to make sure how big of a wheel you can get. And in the rear, it's really gonna be the coilover because there's really not a whole lot of suspension out there that it can hit until it gets to the coilover. So we're gonna go ahead and lift the car up and see what kind of measurements we can get to each of those suspension pieces. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and make note of what kind of tires are on the car now because that's gonna come into play a little bit later. So it looks like at the very most, I'd say I have about three and a half centimeters. So let's take that knowledge, let's go inside and let's do some math. So before we can figure out what measurements we need as far as wheels go for our car, first we have to understand what those measurements mean. Now I actually filmed and edited an entire video just explaining how all the measurements work and all that kind of stuff, but I decided it was a little bit boring and it was kind of hard to follow if you didn't actually see anything in front of you. So for that reason, I'm taking it a little bit of a different way. I got a fucking wheel. So there's two things you guys should know about me. One, I don't want to make boring videos for you guys. I want to make stuff that you guys actually want to watch. But two, I love a good cross section. And I mean, who doesn't? Yum. That's half a wheel. That's another half a wheel. Now with that, I can give you guys an actual visual representation of what all these measurements mean. So now that we got our wheel cut in half, we got a nice little cross section. We got to start learning what the different parts of the wheel are. So this right here, 
the main outside facing part of the wheel is called the face. On the inside of that, we've got the mounting flange. This is the part that's going to be up against the hub when the wheel's installed on the car. Now we have the actual barrel. So as far as the barrel goes, you guys can see the shape is a little bit kind of strange. Right here we've got a very low part, and then we've got two little ridges and two big ridges. So right here we got our two outer lips. Those are the ones that lock the tire from going any wider than this. Then inside of that we've got two little bumps, those are our inner beads. Those make sure that the tire stays where it needs to go and doesn't de-bead itself. And then right here in this middle we got the low spot. This is called the drop center. This is what actually allows us to mount tires onto wheels like this because the tire is actually only going to be this diameter right here. This one is the one that has to get over to be able to be put on the car. Now, you can't do that normally because tires don't stretch. The reason they don't stretch, you guys can kind of see right here, it's got a metal band running through the entire bead, so there's no way that you can stretch those. And if you do, you're not in a good place. So that's what the drop center is there for. That's to make sure that you can mount the tires onto the wheels without stretching them. So now we can get into measuring them. This right here was a 14 inch wheel. Now you would think that 14 inches would be measured from the outside to the outside, but it's actually not. The actual way that they measure these is from where the bead of the tire sits to where the bead of the tire sits. Right there, bead to bead is 14 inches. So that means we have a 14 inch wheel that will fit a 14 inch tire. Next measurement is the width. Now just like the diameter, it's not actually measured from outside to outside. It's measured from the inside of the beads. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's about a five and a half inch wheel. Which is pretty tiny. So at this point we know we have a 14 by five and a half inch wheel. We've got pretty much two more measurements that we can get on the wheel. That's backspacing and offset. So both of those are going to be measured from the mounting flange. All right, this is really important because these ones affect how far in or out the wheel is gonna sit when it's on the car. These are gonna dictate whether or not you have poke, whether or not you're flush, or you're tucked. So offset is pretty much the most important measurement and it's one of the hardest ones to really understand because it's not anything you can easily measure like width and diameter. So let's get on to measuring that. So this measurement right here from the mounting flange all the way to the inner lip of the wheel is your backspacing. As you guys can see, we've got about five and an eighth inch backspacing. This is a really good way to see if your wheel will fit with the spindles that you have or with the struts, depending on what kind of suspension setup you got. Now for offset, it's kind of a little bit more difficult. So basically what we're looking at is where the mounting flange sits in relation to the center of the wheel. If it sits farther out on the wheel, that's positive offset, and it's gonna suck the wheel in to the fenders. And if it sits closer to the inner lip, that's negative offset. So that's gonna push the wheel out farther and give you a little bit more poke. Since this is a five and a half inch wheel, the center line of this wheel would be somewhere right around here at about two and three quarters inches. So that is gonna be the line that we're gonna be measuring off of. It's kind of a hard thing to measure with a wheel chopped in half like this. But you can imagine, we've got, let's say about two inches to where the center of the wheel is from the mounting flange. That means that this has a positive 50 millimeters. And it's honestly one of the most important measurements because this is pretty much gonna dictate whether or not your wheels are gonna fit like trash or you're gonna have like super hot boy stancy ass fitment. Now it all seems a little confusing but there are tools to help you out to make sure that you're making the right choice. Now, let's go up into the office and I'll show you guys what those tools are. All right, so to start out, we're gonna want to go to the internet. I usually like to go to this site called willtheyfit.com. This is an online fitment calculator. This pretty much shows you everything that you need to know. What I'm gonna start out with is inputting my stock wheels to see where that sits, and then I'm gonna put in the size of wheels that I kind of want to get and see what the difference is between them. So as you guys can see here, the width, the profile, diameter of the tire, and then offset and width. So that's pretty much all of the measurements that we've been showing you guys. And this is all right for my car. So the IS300 comes with the 17 inch wheel. They're seven inches wide and they actually have a plus 50 offset. But since I am running a 25 millimeter spacer that takes 25 millimeters off of that offset because it's sticking out farther. So it ends up being a 25 millimeter offset. So that is exactly what we need. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a wheel that's pretty similar to what I kind of think I'm gonna be getting, which is an 18 by nine plus 30. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the calculations and this is gonna show us if it's gonna fit or not and how it's gonna fit. So all we gotta do is click calculate and you can see right here, this graph is showing you how your old wheel fits compared to how your new wheel is gonna fit. So you guys can see that my new wheel is gonna have a little bit of stretch. This is for the front because to be able to fit this wheel, it's gonna be a little bit wider. It's gonna stick out a little bit more, so I'm gonna have to stretch the tire just a little bit to be able to get it to fit. And this is actually gonna tell us exactly how much further it's gonna stick out, how much further it's gonna stick in, and whether or not it's actually gonna clear our spindle. So you guys can see it's sticking in about 30 millimeters further than the wheel is now, which if we actually take a stock wheel fitment and put that there, it's only going in five millimeters deeper than the stock wheels would. So I think that's very likely gonna be fine. I think we had about four centimeters available to us, so this is gonna be perfect. So it looks like at the very most, I'd say I have about three and a half centimeters. Now you guys can see the tire that I'm choosing is actually not gonna stick out any farther than the tire that I have on it now. So that's gonna be perfect so that I can lower it and it'll tuck in pretty nice. As far as the rear goes, we have the same setup, but you guys do know that the, the rear was not poking out as much as the front was, and we still had a little bit of room on that. So I'm actually gonna take that up by running a little bit wider of a tire something like a 245 40 i think and that is going to give me a little bit more traction in the rear and it's going to give me that wider tire to kind of fill up the arch gap a little bit now if you don't have a computer or that just seems like too much work there is actually a phone app called tire size calculator that does the same exact thing and honestly it's pretty nice too so i mean if if all you got is a phone you can still do all the same calculations now me being an absolute fucking extra motherfucker i can't just go without seeing the wheels that i want on my car so i kind of had to figure out a way to be able to really visualize the wheels to make sure that it's something that i'm actually going to enjoy so that is what this document is for as you guys can see a little photoshop document this is my car and uh i've done a few things to it so this was back before it was lowered i pretty much stayed about this right height in the front but if I was to lower it further, that's about where I would want it. Blacked out the old wheel. And now I have a few different wheel choices that I was kind of going through. So I've got the Koenig Countergram, the Odd Hand DSO7, the Kansei Roku, another version of the Countergram, and the XT06 by Cosmos Racing. So I'm still kind of debating what I'm going to do with it. I'm not really sure. So if you guys have any suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. I wanna see what you guys would choose out of any of these wheels. I'm trying to stay a little bit budget friendly because I'm not really trying to spend $3,000 on a new wheel setup, but I want something that'll look good. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for the new wheels because we are gonna be getting those soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but they will be coming in soon. I hope you guys are stoked. I'm fucking stoked. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time.